If you're using Amazon Aurora, you might actually like this news. Amazon Aurora just started supporting Postgres version 14. And uh, as we talked about this in previous uh, videos in this channel, Postgres 14 comes with a lot of feature related to performance and also other features related to, you know, the indexes and the way you send multiple queries in the same connection, JSONB features and stuff like that, which will be really good in the cloud. So let's discuss this. So this comes from Amazon themselves. This is their website. They posted this news around a few weeks back, June 22nd, 2022. And if you don't know, guys, Amazon Aurora is the cloud offering from Amazon to support Postgres on the cloud. If you want to put your database on the cloud, you have, I guess, three options now these days. You can spin up a VM and install the database manually and completely manage it yourself. That's one way to do it. So that's very close to how you do it in the on premises, right? And that means you have to set up replication yourself, spin up multiple, you know, VMs for replicas, blah, blah, blah. You know, there is a lot of work you have to do. The next level is what Amazon Aurora offers and other databases like Google new Alloy DB also offers where they gonna spin up this cluster for you. They're going to have one writer, one primary database where you do all the write, and they're going to take care also for the replication. So they're going to spin up multiple instances as you desire, and they're going to put these into multiple regions because they are in the cloud. And because of that, all the writes goes to this primary database. And as you go to this primary database, they're going to replicate it across all the replicas that you basically want. I think they support up to 15. So in this case, you can scale globally very easily. So it's very attractive. The only limitation, if you will, is it's a single writer, which is also very simple to build out because you don't, the moment you introduce multiple writers, then you have to deal with conflicts. Then you have to deal with distributed transactions and can get nasty. So that's where Amazon Aurora stops the offering and Google Alloy DB. I believe, and this is obviously confirmed from uh, some of you guys who are in this space, in the database as a service space, which I am, I'm not, I'm, I'm an enterprise guy. I always work on with SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, but only on-prem with large organizations uh, in my career, at least. So the third is what Yogabyte does and where Spanner does. And I believe you can go to DynamoDB, although DynamoDB is its own platform, you know, but what Google Spanner does is they support Postgres interface and also Yogabyte support Postgres interface, but they are distributed databases. That means even the writes are distributed. You can write from different regions and they're going to reconcile the changes and they're going to, uh, whether the, regardless of the implementation details here, right? So, and then obviously, they take care of distributed transactions and it gets really complex. So getting that part right is, I would only move to those kind of data if you absolutely need it. If that single primary database, as beefy as it gets, cannot hold your rights anymore, then you might want to do that. But otherwise, stick to simplicity. That's, that's my two cents. With that said, now let's go to what Amazon Aurora supports now. Support Postgres 14. Let's read through this and discuss a little bit. So Amazon Aurora Postgres Compatible Edition now supports Postgres 14. Includes performance proven for parallel queries, heavily concurrent workloads, partition table, logical replication, and vacuuming. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit. Of the, I'm going to show the Postgres matrix in a minute here and talk through that. Postgres 14 also improves functionality for the new capability. For, for example, you can cancel log running queries if the uh, client disconnects because... You might say, Hussein, just if a client disconnects, of course the transaction should be canceled. Well, code has to be written to do that, guys. The connection, the TCB connection to the database is completely different than the process that execute the actual transaction. And it's up, up to you to, to have this feature or not. If you close the TCB connection, you have to write code to let the process know that this has been disconnected and we can freely cancel the queries. Canceling is one of the really hard things to do. You know, 
despite it being it feels easy but it's not you know and some of you might relate to that so yeah there's a lot of features here and uh, they support upgrading your postgres 13 to postgres 14 so uh, let us know guys if you're if you, anyone is excited for this uh, let us know in the comment section below amazon aurora is designed for unparalleled high performance and availability at the global scale full mysql and postgres interesting i didn't know they support actually mysql compatibility so if you have a mysql backup you can just ship it up in the aurora and have all these features continuous backup security serverless compute you know up to 15 read replicas automated multi-region replication and that that's that's the kind of game changer right having my databases as close as possible to every region when i can spend my backends closest to read replicas in this case i don't have the latency you want to clip the database as close as possible to the backend well that said let's go to how, how good is postgres 14 so here I did like a little bit of filtering between Postgres 13 and Postgres 14. Pretty cool stuff, if you think about it. Um, there's vacuum emergency mode. Uh, if you don't know, if you're so busy doing stuff, if you're writing a lot, in fact, writing a lot, that you might run out of transactions, because there is a limit to Postgres. There is 4 billion transactions that can be active at a time. And the reason is because it's a 32-bit integer, this transaction ID, the XID. And we need to clean it. We need to freeze these transactions so we don't get into this problem of a wraparound error, right? Where you almost reach the 4 billion and then you restart and go, and you're going to get the transaction number one where it's also in use or there are residue of an older transaction that did not was not cleaned up. So vacuum emergency mode detects that. If you're about to reach that, and obviously you and I might not hit that ever, but for those who have huge write load, they, they write a lot, you, know, you might actually e easily read 4 billion transaction. Data types, they support new JSON B subscripting, you know, multi-ranges, B tree bottom-up index deletion. They have incremental sort for window functions. Uh, LZ compression for toast tables. So uh, toast tables is when you, for example, have a text field or a blob field. The actual text is not stored in line with the row. It is stored somewhere else in a table that is called taste toast table. And a pointer only is stored in the inline. So if you read something in the row and you ask for that text, the database has to go read that table, do a join and decompress those entries and then present them to the user that's why if you don't need to do a select star never do a select star especially if you have a lot of text field that you're not requiring because the database has to do extra work to fetch those large blobs of text and blob you know binary large files now they support lz4 compression you know? query pipelining was not supported in 13 but now support in 14 and we talked about it in http the idea of pipelining where you have before pipelining if you have a tcp connection you send a query you have to wait for the response in order to send another query right? that's how it was designed it's a simple thing to do regardless of the reasons why we did it this way core query pipelining changes that such that you can send multiple queries on the same connection in parallel pipeline them in a sense and then let them execute in parallel so that's obviously faster but how do you know that query number four won't finish before query number one you have no idea because those four queries they won't finish in order how do you know so you have to do extra logic at the client side to guarantee that oh oh this is response number four so you have to manage oh this query is for query one this response was for query two so that is extra logic you have to do but some people want to do that anyway uh, logical replication stream in progress transaction so this is pretty cool uh, as you replicate data how does a replication work i talked about it in the course right uh, as i insert data into my primary in node right i create entries in what we call the wall the writer held log and i'm writing 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 i'm writing to the wall in my primary database 
and then I, I'm, I'm writing a huge lot of stuff if it's a long transaction. Then once I say commit, we ship this wall all the way to the replicas, all the read replicas that we talked about. Well, if it's large, even with wall compression, then still it was going to take time to ship them through the network. What this feature does is as you write to the wall, they're going to stream in these changes to the read replicas. This way, when you, the moment you commit, even in the, in the primary and you commit in the replicas, they have pretty much everything because we have, as we progress the transaction, we have already uh, uh, streamed everything. So the commits are much, much faster. Obviously, the disadvantage here in case of a rollback, imagine doing all the work only to roll back. So you have to roll back this stuff. You wasted a lot of network resources that shouldn't have been sent, but it's a double-edged sword. It's up to you. If you know that you don't roll back as fat as often, this is a good feature, I think. And there's a lot of data wrapper and the query parallelism here for remote databases. A lot of cool stuff in Postgres 14. So yeah, guys, let us know. Let me know if you're using Amazon Aurora and if you're going to ever take advantage of Postgres 14 Amazon Aurora. I'm going to see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome. Bye.